All right, guys, we're live. I uh, welcome you to the chat. It's been a couple of, uh, maybe a couple of weeks or so since I've done one of these, and I'm, I apologize, I've been very, very busy. I am glad you're here. I see a lot of questions. You guys are here already. Um, thank you for being here. Thanks for taking your time to share your Sunday with me. I hope this time is convenient for all you guys. I just finished breakfast, feeding the dogs, working out, stretching and all that, and uh, ready to roll. Hope you enjoyed the podcast I put up also. Um, it was my part two with Steve Stoops. There's another uh, podcast coming out with Avi, Avi Cohen, the famous Avi Cohen. And that podcast is going to deal with um, him getting his new puppy in Germany. So it's a great chat, great time. I've got another podcast coming up with um, John Cook, who's L.A. Sheriff, uh, canine handler and, um, and supervisor. Great stuff coming up. Anyway, um, let's see what you guys got here on your questions. Um, Nick Vidmar, you're, you're here. I'm glad to see you're here. Um, thank you for your videos. What is the take on saddlebags when walking in the woods? When I hike, I use them only put a small amount of stuff in them. I think they're fine. I did it with Goofy. You know, you want to put some water in them and stuff. It's fine. Make sure that it's not super hot when you do it. Um, dogs can carry extra weight. Make sure it's distributed evenly. Obviously, I um, I think it's a good idea. You know, I, I mean, even weighted vests for dogs. You got to be careful um, if you have a long back dog like a bloodhound or a, a, a dachshund or something like that. It can cause some some uh, swaying in their back, but very very lightweight. It's not a big deal. Go for it. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Ivan, how does uh, military select dogs to bite enemies? How, uh, you train them with sleeve. How do you know they will bite without? Well, that's part of the the training, the secret sauce. They, um, you know, all dogs, police dogs, military dogs, have to be trained to go off of equipment, and that's something that. Some dogs don't do, right? Some, some dogs won't do it. And a majority of the dogs, when they're selected, they're looking for the dogs that already will, so they know they have that, that, that ability to do that. And then they use their training with hidden sleeves, and they work, for, you know, they work the dog from a sleeve or a bite suit to a hidden sleeve, hidden equipment. Then they muzzle train the dog, and it goes further on down the line. Um, let's see. Logan, how do I train the dog, um, not the owner? That's the most complicated part. Um, if I can give you the answer to that, I could really give you the answer to um, to everything. But it's uh, it's just a, an ability to communicate with the person to get them to really understand um, what you uh, what you want them to 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 know. Um, hey, is I'm I'm looking here. I'm hoping Alan. Oh, Alan's probably at church, so he's probably not here. Just want to make sure this looks okay. Looks like it's a little bit hot. Looks like the lighting a little bit hot. But anyway, um, I need you guys to put questions in front of your um, questions so I know. Raina, hi, Robert. I have a one-year-old. I should be doing this too, by the way, right? Boy, this, that's really big on the screen, isn't it? Let's, let's taper that down a little bit. I'm using my new iPad, so I just want to make sure that um, things are in sync because the old iPad is not here anymore. Janet got me this for my birthday, so... Um, Raina says, hey, Robert, I have a one-year-old German Shepherd. She walks fine on leash. However, when I hike with my friends and dogs, she pulls so hard when she is far from them. Um, I do use a prong collar. Well, it, that's just the excitement level of the dog being in a different environment. I would definitely um, get the dog to come back to you. But, but, you know, on a hike, it's, it's, you know, on a lot of these times when the dog is further ahead or there's freedom, the dog is going to act very differently. So I wouldn't overdo it. But Get the dog to understand that even in excitement, the dog should still focus and pay attention on you. That's really important for the dog, really important for your relationship. But um, have fun with your dog, right? Sabine says, what age can recall be expected to be reliable and high prey drive dog? My border collie is 12 months old and recall from wildlife is impossible. Long line only restrains physically, but uh, does not teach it. Well, th this is where with wildlife, this is one of those situations where you, you need to have the ability to use something like an e-collar to, to dissuade the dog from that predatory drive, especially a dog, you know, a border collie, Malinois, German Shepherd, um, dogs with higher degrees of prey drive. Proper e-collar usage is going to be probably one of the only ways, one of the only ways to do that. I know that sounds bad, but that's what it is. Rico, hello for you. Let's see. Um, all right, straight back. My dog drools a lot. She's a six-month-old, kind of nervous, mixed breed. So certain dogs drool more than others. It's not. I don't know if there's really something you can do about that, but um, it is, uh, it, I think it's a genetic thing, personally. I mean, one thing I would check, always have their teeth checked, gums checked, because if there's an abscess or something wrong with their teeth, 
that could um, that could do that could have something to do with it. But for the most part, it, some dogs just genetically drool more than others. Okay, Scotland, Florida. Hi, Janelle. Um, Joshi, she. Right, now it's popping up there. What signs or behaviors do you look for before letting the dog roam the house at night instead of sleeping in a crate? And what age do you expect to see those behaviors? Um, you know, I want a dog that can be calm. I want a dog that I'm monitoring. Like, I'm always monitoring my dogs. I can see Maya's over there, Goofy's over there, Dwayne and Jimmy are in with, with Janet doing uh, her Peloton. So um, I'm always monitoring if they're like, if they're, cruising around the house, looking for stuff, searching for stuff in prey drive, then I know if, if the prey drive is, is on, on a dog, the dog's probably going to do something bad, right? If the dog can kind of just settle in and settle, then chance of that's not going to happen. So I try to make sure that the prey drive is a little, is curved a little bit out of the dog, and that kind of makes it easier. And then just, it's a guessing game, really. Let's see here. Dark Devil, you didn't have a question mark, but I'm going to give it to you. You just happened to be there. Um, how to control aggressive for a 10 month old German Shepherd. I, I would always say aggression is always countered with solid obedience, a good respect for the handler. And that's, that's as simple as that. I know that sounds simple, but that, as simple as an answer that is, it's a very complicated thing to get to. I'm going to turn this light down a little bit. I think it's a little bit hot. Hang on. No, I'm not going away. I'm just turning the light down a little bit here. face was blown out. I can't really pay attention. I think that looks better. Um, okay, what is this? Carrie. It's kind of funny just to jump off camera. You see a black screen for a minute. Um, how to train resource guarding out of dogs or husky gets protective of toys from other dogs. Sometimes the water bowl too. Well, the, first of all, toys, if you're letting your dog play with other dogs and the dog has resource issues, then you don't won't want to have resources in the picture when you have other dogs around. I wouldn't have toys around. I, if I let dogs play with other dogs, there's never an issue, never toys around. So that's the very, very first thing. The water bowl, I put numerous water bowls. When I did the play groups at the LA City shelters, I would always have three, four, five, six water bowls around. So there's never one resource that makes it that valuable. Let's see. Linda Bonin says, other than balanced trainer, can you offer any suggestion of what to look for in a trainer? I have four. You have four trainers. That's a lot, <laughs> a lot of trainers. Um, I look at, you know, the, the person, their relationship with their dog. I look for references. I would look for, um, uh, does the dog, does the person really love dogs, right? That, like, what is this person's passion? What is their background? What have they done? Um, have they done obedience tra training? Have they done protection training? Have they done, you know, sometimes just pet dog trainers are okay, but um, if they just kind of took a course and got into it, mm, I, I kind of worry about that. I kind of look for more of their background. Hi, Donald. Nice to see you there. Okay, Rob's got a question. Says, would you, would a giant schnauzer be good first dog or too much? I like them. They, they, they mature slowly, but they're a lot of dog, right? They're, it's, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of dog. So I would, um, I'd be reluctant to just jump into a giant schnauzer. But if it's from a good breeder and, you know, you, you kind of have a lot of time to spend with it, and you're going to work with a trainer, I would be fine with it. But it's something you're going to want to really think twice about that one. Gregor says, fireworks and thunders to hug and calm or not to ensure them it's cool. I don't like hugging dogs when they're afraid. I think it just, uh, you know, I think when dogs are afraid, they go into fight or flight mode. And I think when you hug them, it takes away that flight mode of them to be able to go away. What you can do, if that's the theory going along with, then um, think about something like a thunder shirt or something like that, because that gives them that comfort of being swaddled, but it doesn't make them uh, restricted where they can't get away. I think that's a good idea. If it's going to work, it'll work. Alfred says, how to stop my seven-month-old German Shepherd to stop redirecting to me when we play tug. When I toss a tug, she goes back to me or drops the toy, then bites me. Well, she's seven months old, so you need to teach her that the game is on the tug, and I would probably keep playing tug with her, um, and when you throw that tug, have another tug with you that you bring out so that she's always biting on a tug, and, and go slow, right? Teach her where to bite on the tug, teach her to hold on. A lot of people I see teaching tug 
teach it in a very frenetic kind of a crazy you know high energy way and the dog is all confused and the dog's just chomping chomping biting and everything so really teach the dog what you want okay rg thank you for that but now i should be better now because i lightened the, the light down i hope that works um Stephen, hi, Robert. Is a flirt pull a good idea to use for an impulse control for falconry dog to polish up? Um, I don't know what you mean by falconry dog. Um, I guess the dog that you have when you're doing falconry. But you can. You can use a, you can use a, um, a, a, a flirt pull to curb prey drive, to bring prey drives up, cap the drive, bring the drive up, cap the drive. Um, but it takes a little bit of um, finesse to get the dog to understand what you really want there in you know at that moment. I hope that makes sense to you. Jennifer says, how can I increase the speed and completion of a command? You have a slow sit, slow down. Okay, so I've talked about this before. The way you increase the speed of it is you um, you you do a quicker release. So you get the dog to sit, and if the dog sits real slowly down, you go, yes, and you release fast, and then you ask them to do it again. The second their butt touches you, yes, you release them. Because th oftentimes the dog is, is um, insecure or is unsure of what's going on, or they're, they're too pensive to think they're going to be staying in that position too long. So release faster would be my answer to you. Um, Rico, any tips for my female mal... For first heat, any particular tips to watch for? Thank you, Rico from Madrid. A couple things I would do is one, keep her away from any dog that's intact. Like any dog that might, you know, I, I would, that's going to be your biggest, biggest, biggest um, issue is that uh, is a dog, an intact male being around her. That's going to be the big one. Uh, second thing is spotting is going to get in your carpets, your floors, whatever. You might want to put a diaper on or something. But um, watch for behavioral signs more than anything because the big, 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 big issue you're going to really have that I would be concerned about that I would really really be worried about would be um, a pyometra and you might want to google that so you know what you're looking at but that that I would um, Jamie I don't know why I clicked on this one but um, I did but you didn't put question marks your question marks are all at the end that's good the beginning and the end um, what do you say about Rottweilers in a family with two kids I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a tough one. I don't really like to go just based on the breed, like, oh, pit bulls and German shepherds and Rottweilers or whatever. It really depends on the dog. If it's a really nice dog, I think it's fine. If it's, a, if it's not a nice dog, it could be a Labrador, a Golden Retriever. It could be, not be a nice dog. It wouldn't be good for the family. But um, it's really going to depend on the dog and the people's ability to handle this. Um, what's this? Math? Yeah, okay. I'm just looking for questions. They have to have um, a question mark in front of it, like that. You see the question mark here? That's that question mark here. That's what I'm looking for because I've got hundreds of questions on the side. And I appreciate you guys all being here. Um, fire. Okay, I already answered this for you, Gregor. I already answered that one. So please don't try not to answer. Ask a question twice because it kind of screws things up. I'm trying to go through a lot of the questions. I want to help as many people as I can in these Q and A. So it's hard for me, like. Um, Dark Devil, you asked me this question about 30 times. It's come through. So I'm going to answer it for you, but you don't have a question mark in front of it, which is why I've, I've gone over it about 30, 29 times now. Um, and I answered it already. The question is how to control aggression for a 10-month-old uh, dog. I said you need to do obedience training for the dog. And I, I'll be honest with you guys. If you keep doing... Um, these things, I'm going to just, ha I got to block it because I'm trying to get through. Oh, it's, I want to be fair to everybody. I really do. Like Dark Devil, I'm going to, you're going to be, um, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, uh, I can't do it. Hmm. All right. Uh, if Alan's in there, you're, okay. Let's see here. Margaret. You are saying, I have a seven-month-old German Shepherd puppy chases his tail. I thought about an e-collar. How would you introduce? Well, I wouldn't use an e-collar for tail chasing. I just, I just teach the dog not to do it. I, I don't let them do it when they're eight weeks old, seven, 17 weeks old. What, I, I just stop it. As soon as they're chasing tails or start going after the tail, I go, hey, hey, knock it off. And I make that very aversive, right? Because that's a neurotic behavior that you're not going to stop. And shocking the dog for doing it is the dog's doing it because he's nervous. And if you don't have a proper um, understanding of why the dog's being corrected, which he won't in this, 
Eco is the wrong tool. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. Um, and Blazed asks, uh, tips for asking dog to walk backwards while in heel or between legs. Well, you're going to lure it, right? You're going to keep your hand in front of the dog with treats in it, and you're going to push back, 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 back on the dog so the dog will um, go backwards. The hard thing is getting a real straight line. But make sure the dog knows backwards in front of you and then do backwards next to you and then do it between your legs. Not really hard to do. I'm going to turn the light down a little bit more. because it will be a long there's gonna be a big shifting of light on it no that looks good wow that looks really really good sorry for you guys had to put up with my washed out white face here <laughs> here um okay let's see oh no you didn't man oh there we go a Rhodesian Ridgeback, one year he lunges at other dogs during walks. He's good mostly during obedience classes with other dogs, but on the street, it's a different story. Love your vids. Well, th that's your, because in the obedience class, he's getting obedience. And in the, on the street, he's, you know, very territorial. He sees, when he sees one up other dog, he probably sees that he's trying to claim his space. And you got to correct it. You got to do your 180s. You know, I talk about this. I've got videos on this on YouTube as well as my member section, which, by the way, guys, if you're not a member of my member section, robertcabral.com, you should be. You really should be. Um, but I talk about that, you know, doing 180s, doing, uh, doing uh, you know, engagement, getting the dog to focus on you and all that. That's really, really important. Um, let's see. Okay, okay. I see any, all these questions without a question mark in front. Try to, I, I mean, I'll catch them here and there, but usually I'll miss them. Um, what are your opinion about doggy daycare? And that's going to really depend on the doggy daycare, right? That's going to depend on um, the person, the person running it, the people managing it. How are they? Um, how are they handling the, the environment? Are they letting any dogs in? Are they screening dogs before they come in? I mean, I certainly wouldn't let my dog. I'll tell you a story. Years and years and years ago, I had a Sharpay and I took him to a doggy daycare, a very very well known doggy daycare here in Los Angeles. And within an hour, they called me. They said, your dog's on his way to the hospital. He's got, he just got attacked. This was a very well-known doggy daycare. That was maybe, no, that was probably about 15 years ago. It was a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I would not do it unless I know that they have some good background, good, good, good reviews and stuff. Paul, I'm going to give you this one, but you don't have a question mark. Um, Six-month-old Malinois, my boy, is very reactive on hyper- Dogs, while don't mind quiet dogs, is he being protective or just moody or do I need to? Well, okay, so the reason a Malinois is going to be reactive on hyper dogs is because Malinois have a very high degree of prey drive. And so when things trigger that prey drive, things running fast, things being uh, erratic and stuff like that, that triggers their drive. That's the same thing with a pit bull. That's the same thing with like a, high drive, like a, like a, a Dutch Shepherd or German Shepherd or any super high drive dog, terriers in particular, are really dangerous for that because that's what they suss out to kill, right? So Malinois are uh, super triggered by, by prey drive, by predatory, um, by prey type movements, and they're going to go after it. If it's a sheep, it's a duck, it's, a, it's something moving fast, and that's what you got to train the dog out of. And that's why a lot of times Malinois will have aggression issues with other dogs that you've got to get in check. Nikama says, oh, Nik Nil Kamal, sorry. Should we use the leave it command for my nine month old German Shepherd puppy reactive to dogs when he gets fixated on another dog, but at a distance, so he's not yet lunging? You can, right? But I don't like to use a leave it command on dogs because I use a leave it command on something that I'm not supposed to pick up or touch. I don't use leave it, and people do. I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I just don't do it. Um, I, I would probably use more of a, you know, a, a redirected command so that you want the dog to be neutral to the other dog in general. As a general, general rule, that's going to be the, the key for you to get the dog as neutral as possible. Um, okay, what's this? Matthew, I just read this. I'm going to post this up here because I think it's something that might be important. Um, membership has been an amazing resource for my wife and I. How do we work on reactivity without having a well-trained dog? Okay, so what you're, what you're saying is how do you work on reactivity, your dog being reactive without having a well-trained dog around? 
And I said this in one of my member Q and A's. I don't know if this was for you, Matthew, or not. But what I do is I would have a situation where there's a dog behind a fence, you know, and I w- as much as possible because you need to protect the other dog and you need to protect yourself and your dog from doing something really stupid. So um, distance, dogs behind fences, and then just look for a neutral dog. But don't put a dog at risk um, to train your dog. That's the worst, worst thing you can do. All right, let's see here. Tammy says, I have an 18-month-old Leonberger. I train in agility and rally. She has renal dysplasia, small kidneys, and I tend to baby her a bit when training. If, if she feels good, can I train a bit harder? Yeah, you can, but you know, with, with this kind of a situation, a kidney situation, you need to make sure the dog stays hydrated and that you don't overdo it. Now, uh, uh, Leonberger is a huge dog, and they don't have an, uh, an intense amount of energy, but um, I'm sure you love her, and I'm sure you baby her. So, I mean, why don't you ask the people you're training with to kind of give you a gauge on it? Because sometimes we don't really gauge our... Um, our ability or our, our judgment as well, because we go, oh, you know, either you're pushing the dog too hard and somebody goes, hey, hey, back down, or you're not pushing the dog enough and people say, hey, you can do it a little harder. So um, I would get an opinion of somebody who's watching you, but but I would, you know, with, with kidney issues, you want to be super careful on the dog. Denver says, I have two working Springer Spaniels thinking of also buying a GSD. Do you think they would be okay together? Um, you know, introducing the shepherd as a young pup and if he comes from good lines where he's been around other dogs, it would be okay, but these are spaniels and, and shepherds are very, very different breeds, and they respond and react very differently to things. So it's going to be a matter of really socializing that uh, those dogs quite a bit. Um, okay, this one I, sk- I skipped over. Sabine, how to improve focus of my dog on me? She's obsessed with looking for squirrels and chase. e collars due to be banned in England soon. I feel like nothing can get her attention with distractions. Well, you can use a prong call. You can use a strong correction. You know, you, the dog needs to know that your correction outweighs the dog's desire to look for prey. Right? That's it. Something will outweigh that. It'll either be a, you know, I mean, it could be an e-call. If the e-calls are due to be banned, I'd probably try to get one and, and keep it. It's terrible. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll be really honest with you. At some point, I'm going to do another podcast on my disdain for the positive-only community trying to ban these tools because it's, it destroys dogs. It really destroys dogs. You can't, there's, imp, it's impossible to get a dog to get to any good, any predatory dog, any dog's got prey drive, um, to, to curb that without an e-collar. It's just, and I, I'm telling you this, I, I know it. People say, oh, there's people doing it in other countries, and I, I doubt it. Um, Sarath says, my three-year-old German Shepherd whines when playing with a four-month-old Labrador. The puppy keeps snapping at him. Well, the, the whining is a leaking. Maya whines you all the time. You'll hear her whining in the background. That's just who she is. Um, it's ge- generally a genetic thing. But the puppy snapping, um, you're going to want to control that, right? I mean, it's okay for the puppy to snap a little bit and play a little bit, obviously, just being a little Labrador. But make sure that your dog sees you in control, that you're going to stop that behavior. If not, the, the dog will take control. Your, your shepherd will take, con- take that, that upper hand, and then you're going to have a problem. So be super, super careful. Um, Matt. Matt, whoops, there we go. How do I stop my mouth from nipping when he's excited? He's a year old, but I just got him a few months ago as a rehome. Well, th- that's probably why you got him. Right, because he's nipping, and and nipping is a behavior that's part again of the prey drive in dogs. So a dog, when they're chasing the sheep, a shepherd, for example, here like a Malinois, um, is going to nip at the f- the heels of the sheep to get them to go into the positions they're going to go to. So that's an instinctual behavior in the dog, and you're going to only get that out of him by teaching him solid obedience, getting the dog to really focus on you, getting the dog to um, see you as an authority figure. But again, it's not done through bullying the dog. It's, it's done through being fair with the dog through structure of yes and no, of good and bad, of, pos- of reward and consequence. That's more important. Thank you, RZ. Um, techno Techno says, would you say a Czech working on German Shepherd and a medium-drive Belgian Malin will have about the same temperament energy levels? 
I, I see your question, um, and I would probably say that a Czech Shepherd has a lot more prey drive than a regular, you know, the, the, uh, uh, an American line Shepherd, especially show line Shepherds, obviously. But um, I think they're very different animals. You know, I, I do. I think they're worlds apart. I think the Malinois has a lot more prey drive, has a lot more speed, has a lot more intensity than the German Shepherd. That would be my um, my my take on it. Again, I'm only going to take questions from here on in with question marks in front of them. Um, please. Let's see. Pissed off 48. 12 week old German Shepherd. When should I start using corrections and obedience training? Now, if he gets it wrong, I lure him. That's perfect. It's keep doing that. The longer you can lure and shape things um, up to, like, I would say almost a year old, the better off your dog will be. You don't want to start crushing this dog's spirit. So, good question. Guys, if you can give the video a thumbs up, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Um, button and the notification bell so that you get notified of these videos every single time I go live and it'll give you a chance to see my videos here on the channel if you're not subscribed there's 200,000 plus subscribers that are here um, great videos always updated I'm updating all the time with either podcasts or dog training videos always always something um, thank you for all those thumbs up I just saw 10 pop through that was really really nice thank you um, Okay, I got that one. Joe says, how do you feel about the recent study suggesting absolute zero aversive training methods? Complete and utter garbage. Trash, crap, useless information. I can tell you right now, let me tell you this much. If you're looking, for a, you're looking only to mark positive behaviors, you're going to be waiting a long time. You're going to be waiting until many dogs die. Moving a dog from a negative position into a positive position is the most humane way you can possibly train a dog. You cannot, cannot get, get successful and proven and reliable results in dog training without some aversion. And I'll tell you something. Positive trainers are, are so stupid. And I'm saying positive only, right? Because I'm a positive trainer. Positive only trainers are so stupid in the thought that they think they can withhold that treat and that's not aversive, right? Holding a treat and saying, no, you can't have this. No, 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 you can't have this. That's not, that's not aversive. That's, that's more aversive than popping a dog on a collar and then giving him the treat. It's terrible. Thank you for the question. Charla says, sorry, my chat keeps getting sent before I'm done. Anyway, three mouths, love them. But Juliet is 11 months old and she's having... And she is a barking how to get her to stop. You have three mouths, Charla. That's a lot of animals. I don't know why you have three mouths, but when you have that many dogs, that's, ju that's just prone to happen. We have four, and ours start barking. It takes me a minute to go, hey, knock it off, and get everybody back down. Um, I would hope that you have a really strong personality where you, and, a, and strong physical presence that you can control these dogs. But three Malinois, that's a, that's a lot of dogs. And especially if they're free in your house, they're not kenneled, they're not, you know, if you're expecting to live with three Malinois like you'd live with three Persian cats, you've got another thing coming. So barking, that's the least of your problem. You need to make sure you maintain individual control of each of these dogs before they, you know, get into that pack drive. That's a, that's a real tough one. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but that's a tough one. Robert says, while well, walking... Puppy, six-month lab mutt, she grabs tree bark off sidewalks, breaks it up, and then takes off running on leash. I can't figure out a sh why she takes off running. Otherwise, it's okay. Well, I'll tell you the reason she takes off running is because it's fun, right? When dogs get something in their uh, mouths, they have fun with it. Oh, this is this thing buzzing here. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, this is the charger for my, um, for my battery here. Let me turn, unplug it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's super, super fun. And that's why they do it. They have a great time doing it. And that's it. You just, you just got to keep that away from, from, um, from them. I mean, I, I don't let dogs pick up stuff that much. I saw some super chat come through. I don't know what that is, but thank you, whoever you are. Um, okay. I, th I, I think I answered that one for you, Matthew. Um, Sharon. Okay, here we go. Two-year-old, two-year-old male with a canine trainer. She is called. She called concerned last night, asking about trauma. He has only been with me for his life. She said he was 
defecating on himself from fear. Wow, that's really that's scary. That's you know that's I mean th that's something I would look at. That's not that's not good at all. If a dog has that kind of a trauma, you should definitely um, look at that. And I mean, if the, the trainer should be able to give you some input on that. You know, that's you. I don't think you did this personally, right? Because that's an insane amount, unless you did something really dysfunctional to the dog, which I can't imagine even what it would be. But um, this is more than likely a genetic issue or something else going on with the dog. I would have the dog checked out by a doctor for sure. And I would um, really focus on some good training and get the dog to understand being away from you is not the end of the world. Uh, you, you need to get the dog used to that. Two years old, I mean, you're going to have a really sad life for this dog otherwise. But the trainer should be able to give you some insight into what's going on there. Okay, Jamie says, I'm going to subscribe to your homepage. Now you're awesome and such a humble man, knowing you, knowing so much and computing experience so well and thankful for your videos. Pleasure. Well, thank you very much. That's a very, very kind thing to say, Jamie. I really, really appreciate that. Donald, thank you so much. Appreciate that. <coughs> Kimberly says, what do you recommend for adult dogs that lose interest in training? I'm currently working on relaxation training for separation anxiety. And sometimes she loses interest after a few minutes. I don't, I don't know what you mean by relaxation training, really. Um, wh what would that entail? Maybe the dog gets bored. You know, maybe the dog is just chilled out. Or is The advice I always give to people who when they have a dog that is losing interest is that the training is too long and too boring. So you need to amp it up. You need to make it more fun. And, uh, and, and that's generally what will work. I don't know what relaxation training is though. I think maybe, can you make, <laughs> it kind of sounds funny, but can you make relaxation training more exciting? Shane, just let's know. I watched your video for a whole year before getting my first dog. Well, that right there, Shane, that is good idea. Very few people do that. I think that's brilliant. So good. You got a staffy massive mix. Your videos have helped me raise a good, well balanced dog. Always recommend you. Thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time to really, you know, learning a skill before you jump into something. I think that's fantastic. Okay, Logan, my roommate has three cats and someone left their Shepsky. <coughs> I care for him now. He's a great dog, not aggressive. Listens, just want them to get along. Well, you gotta, you're gonna have to get the Shepsky into a crate ski. And um, let him watch the cat skis, because the longer he sees them, um, and isn't allowed to interact with them, you know, you want a really mellow dog. The more the dog sees something and nothing interferes with him, the more he just becomes accepting of it. So I always recommend crate training for that kind of situation. Terry says, 10 week old kind of corso eating rocks. How do I get him to stop this behavior? He's obsessed with eating. Well, if he, it's funny, I, and I, I, this is going to sound really snide. And please, please, please don't take it like that. The way you get them to stop doing it is to get them to stop doing it, right? You can't leave them in a place in your yard where there might be rocks laying around. You just can't do that with a dog. Because they're eating the rocks will kill them. It'll definitely, definitely, definitely kill them. So don't leave him in a place where there are rocks. That's, that's one thing. And two, when you see him eating rocks, you need to make that an aversive, whether it's with a, a correction, an e-call, or whatever. Um, this is where the art of correcting a dog properly saves a dog's life, whether it's avoiding a rattlesnake, not eating rocks, not chasing a, a car, not chasing a, a, an elk or something like that. This is where it comes in. Ruff says, is it necessary for the crate to be constantly set up or can we place it and take it whenever we want? I do not intend my mouth to stay in during the day unless I leave home for a few hours. Well, I, I don't know why you want to move it all the time. I mean, what I like to do is leave a crate set up for a dog, and then later, after a year or so, the dog's used to that crate in that spot. I put a bed in that spot, and then that's the dog's spot, and it makes it really easy um, for them to know where they belong. Okay, first line, Pressa, can you train for a speed? Can you train your dog for a speed? I mean, I don't know what you mean, like speed in running or speed in performing obedience and speed and performing obedience i talked about that but again a pressa is not necessarily a really fast dog you know any of the molesters uh, the mastiff breeds are going to be m slower in their obedience and slower in in all the stuff they do just based on the way they're built their their basic structure um well, I, I would think about that, Jamie, um, but I, I, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough one because it's so, this is so specific, right? Finding the right puppy 
for me would be very different from finding the right puppy for the average person because I would want certain characteristics in my puppy that I certainly would not want in a puppy for for another person. So it's that's a really really hard one to do. The video, um, <coughs> excuse me, that, I, that I've got coming up with Avi talks about him finding his dog in Europe. And again, that's a whole nother thing of like the kind of dog that Avi was looking for that you might not be looking for. I, I think just kind of, you know, seeing what I talk about over and over again gives people the ability to kind of figure out what I want in my puppy versus what you might want in your puppy. Jose says, um, hi from India, how much exercise should given on a daily, give on a daily basis to a golden retriever puppy that is two months old? Very little. Two months old be very careful with young puppies. So until a dog reaches a, an age where their growth plates, plates are closed, such as, a, I would say, a year, tw 14, 18 months for bigger dogs, um, before that, any high impact, jumping, running on concrete, overdoing it, can be very damaging to the dog. So be very, very careful with your dogs when they're younger and don't overdo exercise. Yanizel. I always say Yanizel. I hope I'm saying that right. Or maybe it's Yanizel. How do I teach my seven-month-old working line German Shepherd to leave the ball when playing fetch if I grab the ball? She drops it on command when she gets to me, but she doesn't let go if I grab it and starts playing tug. Use two balls. You, you must learn to use two balls for the dog to understand that, and then a strong out. Paula says, six-month Malinois has reactive behavior towards hyper dogs that are near him. While he is okay with calmer beside him, it is protection. Or uh, If you ask me this question, um, you need to get the dog to focus. First of all, at six months old, it's too young, right? It's too young. It's too young to have a hyper dog next to a dog that's reactive at six months old. You need to teach the dog um, good focus, good obedience. You need to take things that are stressors out of the dog's immediate vicinity and you need to get the dog to understand that um, you're going to be fair you're going to introduce things in a fair way if you just put a crazy hyper dog next to a dog that a puppy i should say at six months old you're being unfair to the dog so you need to back off on your dog and be be a little chill on that be, until the dog learns that you control and that the dog must listen to you um skim is 10 months old too young for a prong collar or e-call and my boy just can't focus during walks well i wouldn't put a prong or an e-call on him to get focus you need to get the focus and then use the prong and the e-collar to correct for lack of focus right in other words i don't want to force a behavior through aversion i want to correct for um for for disobedience that's a big difference. So you need to figure out how to get his focus. And then once you get it, use an e-collar or a prong collar to correct him for not giving you what he, what, what he already knows to give you. That's a big, big piece. If you get nothing else out of this podcast, that might be the most valuable one. Um, yeah, I can't believe we don't have 100 like it. We have 173 people in here. We should have at least 170 likes, I would think. And I'm getting some good information here, guys. Uh, Jessica, I, I, I don't know why you can't ask a question. I just saw you say you, you can't ask a question. Nick says, my almost four-month-old German Shepherd puppy is doing great but has a demand barking habit. If he wants something, he barks. I've tried ignoring but doesn't seem to be working. Thoughts? You're not ignoring long enough. You're not ignoring hard enough, right? At some point, you're giving in, right? Whether it's by, uh, by talking to him, by, by being upset with him or something, but demand barking from, a, a, first of all, a four-month-old puppy is just going to bark. That's just what they're going to do. So get the dog to understand that there's times to be in a crate. There's a time for that crate to be covered. There's a time for that crate to be in another room with the door closed. And let him bark all he wants. But he's not going to get anything out of it. That's it. And we're at 109 likes. Thank you so much, guys. Um, Carrie, what can I do... What steps can I take to prevent resource guarding toys and food from a puppy and an adult dog? Well, a puppy is going to do that, but right? they're going to be very playful. If your adult dog is resource guarding, you need to really figure that out and not let your puppy get messed up by that because he can get bit by it and get hurt by it. And um, that's something you want to really, really stop. So um, you need to work that separately. You can't really put a puppy and, a, and an adult dog in the same situation if 
one, especially if the, the adult dog has resource guarding issues, you need to get the dogs under control. You need to get the obedience. And that's why I say don't get a puppy if you have a dog that's out of control because it's going to filter through onto the puppy. So solid training separately and then bring them together. Um, I, I, I mean, I only have a little bit of time left. I feel like 20 minutes left. So I want to get to all your questions. RZ, what do you think of the gentle leader and how soon do you use I don't use it. I don't use any gimmicks. Slip lead. That's it. Slip lead, if you can do nothing else. Uh, bar, uh, 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 a um, Martin Yoke Holler. That's it. Joe says, how how do you feel about the recent study suggesting zero aversive training? They say it's totally ineffective, but it helps with, with my pit bull. Well, if it works for your pit bull, that's great. I mean, you might be the only person in the world I've ever seen that could uh, have a pit bull. Um, they say it's totally ineffective. If it helps with you... I, I don't know. Good. I mean, if you can train a dog without any aversions, amazing. Dan, I have a 14-month-old band dog I purchased to be a family guardian. He excels at this task. Should I train him in protection work or just naturally let him do his thing? Well, if you've got a band dog and you're trying to get him to do protection, well, I would definitely put him in some kind of protection training because it's going to give you more reliable protection and more reliable control over the dog. Absolutely. Jessica, I have a six-month-old German Shepherd. He lunges on leash and barks like a madman. How do I stop this? It's playful. Doesn't sound... It, it is playful. Doesn't sound playful. I would like to teach him leash manners. You know, it, you just have to do it, right? In other words, if I, how do I get my dog to sit? You put a treat above his head or you push his butt down. Um, when a dog is doing these kind of behaviors, you need to remove the dog under control and bring him back in. I talk about the about turn exercise. They just keep turning around and coming back and turning around and coming back and turning around and coming back until the dog is just compliant to you. The dog must see you are in control. And if you're in control, then the dog will be in control. That's it. Alexander says, I have a one and a half year old male German shepherd has become really aggressive towards strangers and also to our friends. People he's known for at least a year and visit us at least once a month. Frustrating situation. What on earth is this? Well, so he's coming into his own little self, right? And I always talk about that, that nine-month window and that 18-month old window. You're at that 18-month window. This is, uh, in my experience, it's been the most common places where problems lie especially at the 18-month window. That is the biggest place. That's where the dog is going from adolescence into maturity and becoming a dog. And that's where you need to really be in control of the dog. The dog needs to have a solid down command. needs to have a solid place command. You might need to put the dog in a crate. Um, let the dog see that you're in control. I and mean, if you put the dog in a crate and let him see that people are going to come and he has no option in that picture, and then you take him out and you teach him a place command or a leash, you know, have him on a leash, obviously, and, and make sure he knows people are going to come in. Don't leave him loose and let him be aggressive because that's a, a reaffirming behavior. He gets to do it. He gets away with it. That's dangerous. So he has to see that you are going to correct that behavior. You will not allow that to happen. And no tr amount of treats in the world is going to do that. Alfred. My trainer suggested to doggy daycare my pup because she is reactive and I wasn't able to socialize her when she was younger. What's your opinion? I, I mean, if she's reactive, are they going to just put her in a doggy daycare group with other dogs? That, that would be my first question. I would think that she would need to be acclimated into it. And I would think a situation where somebody is doing, you know, either pack walks or um, group training would be better than just a, a random doggy daycare. But if, th if there's something I'm missing in that, perhaps it is a good idea. Maybe, maybe there, it's a doggy daycare with structured interaction, structured um, training and stuff like that. Because then it would be a good idea. You've got to get the dog to be um, neutral to other dogs. The, uh, the danger also comes in when you get a dog that, is, um, that they just put in doggy daycare. The dog will become awfully doggy, right? And doggy means the dog is just going to look to be interacting with a dog, with another dog and not focused on you. So that's the danger of going the other side. Um, Elaine, I have a German Shepherd, a one-year-old. German. Sh I have a German Shepherd, a one-year-old, and when she gets sick side it, or I tell her no, she chases her tail. What, to, what tail chasing is, I talked about before. Tail, I don't know, I, could, I can't answer the first part of your question. 
But tail chasing is something I just tell my dog not to do. And if they do it, I pop them on a leash, I grab them by the scruff of the neck, and I go, hey, knock it off. And then I give them something to do, like uh, a Kong with some treats in it or food or a bone to chew on or something. You've got to stop dogs from tail chasing. That's a super nervous neurotic behavior that's going nowhere fast. Erica says... Reactive three-year-old German Shepherd have tried all sorts of different collars, prongs, slip lead, etc. Nothing seems to help. What do you think of gentle leaders strong enough for a German Shepherd? Well, well no. Here's, here's the answer to your question, Erica. You've tried all these different things and none work. And I'm going to guarantee you one thing. The next one's not going to work either. Because it's not the tool. It's the person handling the tool. And I'm not offending you here. I'm, I'm telling you something. I'm giving you some tough love. That you need to be the tool. You need to be the correction. It's not the gentle leader. It's not the prong call. It's not the e-call. It's, not, it's none of those things. It's you. You're not strong enough to convince this dog not to be a jerk. So you need to figure out how to do that. There's no tool in the world that will work if you're not able to enforce what that tool is doing. Um, Okay, Joe, I think you asked me this question before. I see your name is coming. How do you feel about aversive training methods, choke training that are being totally ineffective according to a recent study? My dog doesn't always respond to positive only. Well, first of all, if you guys are going to come in here and ask me about positive only training, I'm going to tell you it's garbage, right? I'm going to tell you it's not effective. It's not, it's not reliable because if you do it with a dog that has any kind of prey drive, is, has any kind of dominance, they will not uh, acquiesce to it. It just won't happen. I mean, you can show me all the studies in the world you want, and then I'm going to tell you that for 12 years that I've spent with very dominant dogs, I've spent with dogs in the L.A. city shelter system, the Los Angeles city shelter system, one of the toughest shelters in the world, and positive-only training doesn't work. That's why these dogs end up there. So all these yayas with all their information about positive-only training, they have not, have not in any way spent the time or experience that I have spent with severely dominant or reactive dogs. If it worked, I would be doing it. If it worked, there would be no dogs in shelters. If positive-only training really worked, those positive-only trainer people would be doing live videos from, from municipal shelters all over the world showing how effective it is. But it's not, and they don't. John. My dog is a German Shepherd, Siberian Husky. He is great in the house, but tends to ignore me when you're out and about. Well, he doesn't respect you when you're out because the outside world is more interesting than the inside world. So inside, he's going to listen to you because it's boring. He's seen it over and over and over. There's nothing there that's stimulating him. When he goes outside, he's stimulated by sights, smells, and sounds. Those are his three core senses, and those are what triggers him. And if your relationship, your obedience, or your position over him, and you must have a position over your dog. You cannot have an equal position to your dog, and you cannot be under your dog. You must have a position over your dog. Um, if that does not outweigh the dog's predatory drives, the dog will ignore you. That's it. You make it through fun. Make it through aversion. However you got to do it. Catherine says, my German Shepherd walked lovely to heal, but since using the slip lead for reactivity, she pulls. E collars and prong collars were banned in Wales, and there you go, right? When when these politicians start to make rules that affect your quality of life, and you're paying tax dollars on it, it's it's bull, it's complete crap. So, um, you know, what can you do? I mean, I, I I don't know. You know, you're in a situation where you can't use the tool that will actually help your dog. So now you are destined to let your dog fail because the government has failed you, man. I wish there was a way you could vote these people out, you know. Sorry, skim. How to get through puppy teenager phase. Patience, that's it. And Catherine, by the way, um, it, the, the slip lead, you can probably just, you know, maybe go back to doing some aversive turns, some about turns, about turns, about turns. I'm, you know, I, I didn't mean to kind of, I kind of got derailed on that, but, um, you know, put... Put the slip lead on and, and use a longer slip line and teach the dog from the... I've got a video coming out on it in, in my member section in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
where you're making these about turns and and that kind of gets the bug back but it's gonna take a lot more work than a prong call uh, it just annoys me i'm so sorry that you have to go through that triturion says i have a Brittany pup six months he is very timid around most new stimulus while on the leash he will drop down flat as a board what is the best way to approach to stop this behavior um these are genetic nerves in your dog so um you know, the one thing you're going to need to do is to get the dog exposed to these things at a distance. So whenever you can um, bring things that stimulate the dog in a negative or a positive way like this um, into the picture at a distance, get the dog outside, you know, start feeding the dog in, in these kind of environments. So the dog has to work through it and has to go into their own drives, like their own predatory drives and say, OK, I can either be afraid of this and not eat or I can kind of work through it and eat um, that. Those are things that really, really help. Robbie Davenport says, six-year-old German Shepherd doing well with healing, but walks slightly in front. She's checking in frequently, but would like her to walk behind since she has leash reactivity. Thank you. Well, so the, the one thing you have to realize is that when a dog is trained to walk on a loose leash, they're going to be leaders or laggers, right? Just by natural genetics, they're going to either be a little tiny bit in front of you or a little tiny bit behind you. Focused healing, which is what we teach competitively, the dog is exactly next to you, but it's not a sustainable exercise that we can ask a dog to do for a long period of time on a walk. Right? It's just, it's not, it's not sustainable because there's distractions around, there's potholes, there's curbs to step on and off of, there's, you know, things in the field that they might trip over. So um, unless it's a sterile environment, we can't ask for that kind of a behavior. So um, let the dog be where they're going to be, but be sure it's on a loose leash. If the leash is loose, it doesn't matter if the dog's behind you or in front of you. I wouldn't worry about that, but you can, in, you know, you can integrate a correction really, really quick. Okay, Matt says, I want to try to inform someone that bite work is not actual aggression and is looked at by the dog as a game. How would I go about this? Looking to do bite work with my Dutch Shepherd. Well, um, I, I don't understand your question because you're saying we want to try to inform someone that bite work is not actual aggression. I know that, right? We teach bite work um, in a dog's defensive drive, but which is through a play drive. It's a game. It's all a game. Good trainers will always, always teach it like that. They only got a couple minutes left here, guys. So I'm going to um, scan, through, scan through here really quick. By the way, if you have not subscribed to my channel at robertcabral.com, please, please, please go over Sign up right now. You'll get another hour of this chat because I'm going to go on for another hour in the member section. You can, if you sign up now, you'll be into the member section in the next five minutes and you got another hour of me. That's worth the price of admission all in and of itself. And you, every time I do a live chat, I always do an extra hour live on my member section. Dawn says, how do I get my 21-month-old German Shepherd to not pull when I walk her? I rescued her and she gets scared from some sounds. She will put her tail between her legs. Sometimes she doesn't pull. Well, first of all, you need to get her to not be fearful of things, and that is just going to be through constant exposure. And again, I always talk about getting dogs that are fearful of the outside, don't feed them inside. Feed them outside. And if they don't eat inside, then let them skip that meal and then bring them outside the next meal. If they skip that meal, bring them outside. By the fourth or fifth meal, they're going to eat. I promise you they're going to eat. Um, that's going to be a much easier way than trying to outthink this one. Um, I'm just going to go through here real quick and pick a couple of random ones. This is a random one here. Mary Kay, 7 0 German Shepherd, still jumping on people and piddling in the house when excited. How do you get her to stop? Well, the piddling is one thing. The piddling is don't let people run up to her and, and be giddy and get her playful. They can only meet her in a calm way. And I'm, for the next few months, probably, uh, when people came over, I would have them completely ignore her. I wouldn't say hi to her. I wouldn't touch her. I wouldn't pet her. I wouldn't interact with her. I wouldn't do anything. I would simply ignore her because that'll get her to calm way 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 down um uh, put her in a crate don't talk to her don't use high-pitched spray type sounds and if you have her on a leash then she needs to be um you need to just step on that leash and she can't jump up it's a simple simple fix okay divingo divlingo i don't know what, that, maybe what it is i've been really interested in schutzen and try and to be involved in the sport i recently had a trainer come to my place it said one year old pit malvery I don't know. I didn't get the rest of it. Ronan Dog, thanks for the super shot. I just saw it. Um, okay, let's see. I'm just trying to find questions here real quick that I can get to. Here's one redemptive. I haven't seen a pick question from you. How to best deal with a nine-month-old puppy using excessive whining when he can't get what he wants 
and he's being corrected. Well, overcorrecting the puppy is not going to help. It's going to make it worse. The whining comes from frustration. So the, le- the more you can lessen that frustration without obviously giving in to the dog, the better it will be for the dog. The structure you give your puppy is, this, is, the, is the behavior, the good, solid behavior you will get out in your dog in the in the later years but you got to see things through you can't um you you can't stop the whining right the more the harder you try to stop the whining the worse the whining will get so i would try to um keep the dog busy with something else and a lot of times whining is just a genetic issue maya is a whiner that's it that's all i can tell you okay i'm scrolling through real fast there's so many and i'm i want to deeply apologize to you guys um great dogs thank you for that super chat i see a bunch of super chats came through here thank you so much um, I'm just looking through, I guess I'm going to, I got to wrap this up. Um, there's so many questions. I'm so, so, so sorry, um, that I can't get to all your questions. It's an hour chat. It's all I can really do. Um, I thank you. If you have more questions, you know what, consider joining my member section at robertcabral.com. Um, if you want to get one of my shirts, one of these shirts, one of the cool hats, all the links are in the description down below. You can buy them right now and enjoy um, enjoy them. They're, they're super, super cool. Lots of great stuff coming up. I'm working on a new product that's going to be a game changer for dog training. That will probably be available in the next couple of weeks. I'm working on the prototypes right now still. Um, and again, like I said, subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when I come live. Right now we've got about, what, 164 people, 136 likes. Thank you very, very much for that. Thank you for your dedication to dog training. Thank you for your dedication to, um, to my channel. I really appreciate that. Spread the word. Tell your friends um, that this is the place to go for real dog training information. Honest, right? I'm right to the point. It's cut and dry. There's no BS. There's no sugar coating. Some people like it. Some people don't. Even if you don't like it, the information is there to help you with your dogs. You may not like it. You may not like the way I say it, but it's the truth. And that's what they say. The truth will set you free. I'll see you next time. Thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it.